Hi, my name is Caroline DeFreitas, and I'm the HR Director for Soho Medical Doctors. And I'm Falana Galileo. I'm one of the HR Generalists at Soho MD. And today's episode is about the great resignation. So throughout the couple of years, starting in 2020 and actually even into 2019, we've been seeing a high increase of resignations. And so we want to bring up this topic because it is a trendy topic going on in HR professionals and just all throughout different industries. We've seen people resigning for pay. Um, we've seen people resigning because they want a flexible uh, schedule where they are not working 40 hours, they're working maybe 30 hours or doing part-time work. We've seen people resign because they're looking at um, a, you know, a hybrid model, either working from home uh, and also working in the office, or people just want to work from home uh, just exclusively. And we just want to come to um, our audience to talk a little bit about this. So Falana, you've done a lot of research and I want to have you showcase some of that research to everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. So um, with the great resignation, as we were just talking about, there's a lot of people looking to leave. I think with sitting at home in quarantine, access to social media, people have gotten to speak to each other and also seeing how their company works during COVID if they really prioritize their employees or not. Um, so there's been a lot more talk of options that people didn't even know that they had. They didn't even know that an employer, um, you know, should give them the option to work hybrid if it is you know a possibility during a time where they feel that their health is in jeopardy different things like that and then also spending time with your family while you were in quarantine brings up a lot of those feelings of hey i could be doing this at home and spending a little bit more time with my family instead of commuting all of this way and different things so i think it's definitely been interesting. It's always not, it's not always great, but I do think it's important that people advocate for themselves and their needs. And it's important that you're happy with your work because it has such a huge impact on your life. And we've been yeah. seeing people even on TikTok. I've seen people on TikTok do stories of the things that they're looking for uh, from an employer. And so making the even part of marketing and branding and putting this up on social media efforts of what they're looking for. Um, and I think that our wave of HR has to change, right? We have a traditional way of doing things, but we, because of social media, because of technology having such impact, we also have to make shifts, right? Um, and being more creative with our total reward packages, being more creative and, and allowing vulnerability, accountability within the workplace. And what does that look like for a safe environment? Um, so, Falana, if you don't mind sharing a little bit, diving into that some more. Yes, definitely. So we wanted to give you a few tips on if you do move forward and decide that it is time to resign from your position. Um, the first thing you want to do is definitely make sure that this is the right time. Don't resign just because you're feeling emotional about your current position. We all go through times of stress at work where it may feel like, oh, this is it. I cannot do this anymore. <laughs> And like, I think that we could all relate to that. Um, but you want to make sure that that's not your sole reason for leaving any place. You want to make sure that you're you're set up and you're going to be okay after you make this decision. And it's not purely emotional. Um, if it's possible, I know not all work environments work this way or make you feel comfortable enough to do so. But you definitely want to try and speak with your supervisor. You want to try and speak with HR if you don't feel comfortable speaking with your supervisor to see if there's anything that can be done to help you with whatever your issue is with your, your work environment. And um, even family members, right, Falana? Like yes. they can talk to friends and family members, just, you know, someone that you really care about and that you trust and that's your confidant. Um, speaking with them as well, they may be able to provide you with some insights, some things to think about, some feedback so that you can bring back to your supervisors. Yes, definitely. Um, and then we also talked about social media. You can hop on Google and find these things as well, which is really great. It's awesome to have those extra resources. Um, so after you've decided that it is the right time for you to resign, you want to make sure that if you're doing this based off of another job offer, you actually have that offer at hand or have that email in your inbox is really how it's probably gonna go. <laughs> so make sure that you know your start date, you know that everything is set out before you make that choice to resign because it's always awkward to have to double back. <laughs> um, 
And you also want to make sure that you're giving at least two weeks notice. So um, depending on your position, depending on your company, they may require that you give more. I would definitely check out your employee handbook just to make sure that it's not a longer length of time that they're looking for. But minimum, of course, the standard is two weeks. Yep. Some type of like leadership roles, I would definitely say a month. Um, if you are a provider, uh, definitely a month because you have to transfer patients. You want a smooth transition. This is, you know, I, I like to say it's um, it's a transitional period. So if someone's leaving, it's considered a transitional period. You want to leave your employer successful. You're not trying to leave them high and dry, right? Because they were once the place that you selected. So you want to ensure that you're leaving on good stance because you never know who has to give you a last drink of water. My grandmother, my aunt always <laughs> told me that you never know. And so you always want to leave a place or transition out in the most healthiest, professional way possible because you just never know. Um, and it, it makes you feel good. When you leave on good terms, it makes you feel good. Now, I understand sometimes that always cannot happen, but try to conduct yourself with the highest uh, level of professionalism in the workplace when that's happening. Um, and you can do so if you're not sure. Again, talk to HR um, or, you know, you can Google. Uh, one thing I will recommend, and this is probably for my younger audience, please, please do not put your business on social media. Please do not put a TikTok about you resigning on social media. Your bosses, your employers are looking. Uh, your employ your colleagues are looking. They will share if they if they want to. Please, please, if you have that's the thing that you put in confidence. So sharing in confidence with family and friends is one thing. Sharing to the entire universe is another. And your new employer is also looking. So I just want that to share that because, you know, coming out of college or coming out, um, you know, just out of high school, someone might have not told you that. So I want to just also make sure that you're not broadcasting that information on social media because it's not the right place to do so. Yes, definitely. So when you've made that decision and you're, you've written your letter, you want to meet with your supervisor. I would suggest if you're in person, of course, meet with them in person. If not, give them a call, set up a, a meeting time, because it's always best to deliver the news um, to them personally first before sending out that letter to everyone it has to go to, be it your supervisor or HR. Um, just as Caroline mentioned, to make sure that you're you're sustaining those relationships because you never know what could happen in the future. Um, so you just want to leave on good terms, have that discussion, then submit your resignation letter and make sure you're including your effective date. You can say thank you for the opportunity if that's applicable, of course, um, if you feel comfortable doing so. And um, like she also said in maintaining that relationship, just making sure that you're wrapping up your current workload as much as you possibly can. Um, of course, I know it's not always possible, but if you're able to wait until they bring someone else on board so that you can help make sure that it's a smooth transition, that would be great. But that's not always the case, so that's understandable. But just try to make it as smooth as possible. Um, and then expect an exit interview, probably from HR, just because we want to know how your experience was. What was it that caused you to look for another position? Or did this position just fall into your lap and it was so great um, and there was just nothing that we could have done. It's just good to know. And then that also helps your teammates out in the future as well. If there are any gaps that we could be filling, we would definitely want to know about that. Yeah, and the exit interview sometimes can savage these relationships um, because sometimes also people are not talking to their supervisors or managers. Mm -hmm. They're just immediately resigning. And so a HR can intervene. I've actually had people that have resigned this uh, a role in HR no, excuse me, not in HR, but in Soho MD and come back, which I loved because they come back and they're thriving and they have a different experience outside and come back with different eyes. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we've had like we we spoke with Ateeb on previous episode. Uh, Ateeb is now a pharmacist. Ateeb did all that, followed all those steps, spoke with his supervisor, spoke with the managers, shared his resignation. The reason because he's becoming a pharmacist. And so that transition was nice because he was able to train the, the up and coming person to do the role and to fulfill 
those needs. So that was a successful transition. And then we were on a, a HR, uh, more than HR a Monday episode with him. And we still have that great relationship. When I see something, uh, I send a message to him. We're still having that beautiful relationship. So that's what it's all about. It's about transitioning successfully. We understand as employers, um, or as employers, we understand that, you know, things may come up and what your goals and personal aspirations are maybe not aligning. That's okay. You know, that's absolutely okay. An employer has to be able to understand that. But at the same time, as an employee, you should really kind of sit down and say, okay, I'm in this position. I'm in this role. I'm in this company. What are the reasons? What are my pros and my cons? Where do I see myself in the next five years. It's why Falana and I did the other episodes of, you know, manifesting your goal plans and what you see uh, to be necessary. So thank you, Falana, so much for sharing this. This is really good. And Falana is going to share also a link uh, in reference to more information about this and uh, about the great resonation and what are things you can do uh, to ensure you have a smooth transition. Yes, I will. It'll be from Indeed. They're always a great resource. Very right. great resource. And also Sherm, really great resources yes. on both ends. Uh, Falana, thank you so much. And happy Monday to everybody else. Cheers. Yes, happy Monday. Happy Monday. Oh, and happy Mother's Day as well. And happy Mother's Day. Wait, happy Mother's Day. Happy Nurses Week. It is yes. always Nurses yes. Week. Oh, there's so many blessings within this week. So hope you all enjoy and have a successful week. Cheers. <laughs>